This week at Coffee and Tools, we're doing the micro jig, and oh, the aliens are back. <laughs> Ooh, the aliens almost caught me that time. <laughs> this week, micro jigs, power gripper, or push block. <laughs> what a cool topic. Look guys, micro jig, uh, printed on a 3D printer by me. What an awesome, what an awesome item this week. Got to talk about it. Stay with me. This week, I ran into a file on Thingiverse for the micro jig or uh, push block as they like to call it. The deal with this thing is that one of the problems I ran into is I don't know what material. One fella told me to use PLA, somebody else said ABS, so I got two different opinions on what to use for plastic on this build. First thing I wanted to help you guys with was look out. There's 11 files. It's going to take you roughly about 18 hours, something like that, in total print time. So it's going to cost some print time and only a little bit of plastic, but you're also going to need some uh, metric screws. The whole thing was drawn up by somebody who apparently is, I guess, in a metric country. So we, you know, you're going to run into that problem. Now, what I've done since I've been 3D printing and using the tools for woodworking, I bought an assorted kit, and I'll see if I can provide a link down in the description below for that assorted kit. So you can go take a look at it. It's a stainless steel metric assorted kit, small nuts and bolts and it's perfect for projects like this that you run into on the internet. The only other thing I ran into a bit of a problem with, but I found something, was some metric screws, the uh, Phillips head for the top of the handle. Uh, everything else is just sort of straight nut and bolt for these little knobs. The first thing I, I noticed was there's a back knob and it's bigger than these all the other knobs. You print six knobs actually. The back knob, is taller because it has to clear it allows your fingers to you know clear this little piece back here a little bit like i said 11 11 uh, stl files <laughs> now when you print this up you need to you should take a look at how many pieces you need for each item uh, this side plate for example is also right here in blue you know this black side plate is the same part that's also in blue over here. So technically, you'd save yourself some time to make two of these uh, side plates. There's also a uh, two pieces here that I, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I sort of don't need these. Are the only two pieces you probably don't need to print because they're for the uh, router. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I use my router, I don't need a push block like this. But if you, uh, if you just so desire, hey, have at it. Now, the only other thing that was missing was this right here. Uh, on the actual one you can get from the company known as uh, Microjig, they have some rubber uh, glued on here. So I went out and I picked up some Gorilla Glue and some of this, uh, you know, non-skid padding from like Lowe's. And, I, you know, we're just going to glue that up there on these three rails. And when you do that, I'm going to glue up to about here and, of course, the two rails. Uh, the only other problem that I do see with this, I guess down the road, is this little block. This has to catch the lumber. So let me, sh let me close up and show you that. So, yeah, here, here's the end of a piece of board. And you can see there's the actual uh, block. And when you pull it back, that's going to lock behind it. That's actually pushing the lumber through, technically, besides the grip, you know, the gripping force of, the, of what you have here on the surface where you're actually driving it through. The other thing I was looking at, and it's not as bad as I thought, I'm surprised. I was worried about the saw, you know, being too high and catching in here. But again, if you're cutting a piece of lumber, you've actually got quite a few inches of clearance. So you can, I would bring your saw blade up, but don't, you know, get into this, of course. The uh, project, cost-wise for the plastic, you're probably looking somewhere, let's face it, you're, you're looking at a few dollars for the plastic, and that's about all, and some nuts and bolts, and you've got this really neat little extra tool that you could add to your wood shop that you can print on a 3D printer. I think that's an absolute blast. But I wanted to share all this with you today because, like I said, I ran into some problems. I'll share my thoughts and, you know, what happened. The uh, knobs, I only made one knob, then I found out you need 
six knobs, or at least this setup right here, right now, I'm using three of these knob kits, and like I said, the one back knob. So once you make the one back knob, you're good to go with that. The other thing was this piece here probably could have been made also with this piece here. Uh, the top plate, I made it, and I didn't like the way it was set up, but without using supports, the top plate is made upright like this on the 3D printer. Now my CR10 did a great job and it, it, it knocked it out no problem. Didn't knock it over or have any weird stuff going on. But it did scare me that this was uh, sitting upright like this when it's printed and it turned out it was okay. The handle, same thing. The handle was, it was a no-brainer. There's no support or anything on the handle. PLA, 20% uh, infill, just make it like that. And I actually really like this handle better than the actual uh, power block or gripper that's uh, supplied by micro uh, micro jig because theirs is kind of rounded here there's really nothing this this is kind of a nice feature I kind of really like this handle <laughs> a thumbs up to whoever you know came up with this deal this week that's what I wanted to do show it to you, to you. Uh, I'm gonna provide a link in the in the description below and you'll be able to uh, pick up the 11 STL files out of Thingiverse, download them, and that way you can get yourself or your friend or uh, someone to hopefully get the 3D printer running and make yourself one of these little push blocks. The only other thing I was looking at uh, also I want to mention is this little piece back here. This will, if you had a really thin lumber, you could catch your table saw with it and you know, maybe even break this off, but because of the general I'm just showing you, you know, 5 8 board here. Obviously, there's nowhere, it's not going to get near the table, but I also noticed that when you're in front of the table, if you try to start this off the table, you're having a tendency to sort of, you know, lift on your lumber, you're going to knock it out of the way. So, you're better off to start on top of the table anyways, where this thing's not going to get hung up. Check your clearance here with your blades, and just enjoy the product, because I think this is... This week, this is one of the coolest things I've made. Now, I've got a big project going on behind me here, and it's that Hitachi. Uh, it's a compound sliding miter saw, and we're doing 3D print stuff for it because all the plastic is gone. And uh, that's becoming quite a, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's technical, it's challenging to try to draw up new parts for it, but I'm managing, so we'll be sharing that one pretty soon in the future. Hey. Thanks for watching Coffee and Tools. It was a short one today, but if uh, if you, you're interested in one of those uh, micro jig, you know the gripper, you can make one on 3D printer. Cool. <laughs>